My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. Hello, you are welcome to episode number 68 of the 120 days to jump physics with Flash Isaac. This episode promises to be very interesting, promises to be very simple and promises to solve a lot of confusions you might have when it comes to lenses, optics, and even mirrors. Ladies and gentlemen, I have already analyzed or explained that when it comes to mirrors, a mirror can be plain or curved or spherical. Plain mirrors and curved mirrors. Now, for curved mirrors, these mirrors can either be concave or convex. Going back to lenses, for lenses, we don't have plain lenses. Lenses are basically curved, which means we don't have plain lenses, but we have concave and converse lens lens and these are mirrors obviously there will be of differences between lenses and mirrors let's look at one or two of those differences between lenses and mirrors mirrors can be plain or curved and they work based on the principle of reflection lenses on the other hand are curved and they work based on the principle of refraction generally lenses can even be curved on both sides giving rises to what we call or giving rise to what we call biconcave lenses and biconvex lenses so you can get something like this in lenses being curved on both sides and there was something i mentioned when it comes to calculations, we treat concave mirrors the way we treat convex lens. And we treat convex mirrors the way we treat concave lens. That doesn't mean everything about them is similar. It implies that for concave mirrors, the position of the image is determined by the position of the object. Why for convex mirror, we have a fixed type of image, right? Which is virtual, erect, and diminished. Virtual, erect, and diminished. On the other hand, for concave lens, we have only one type of image, virtual, erect, and diminished. Meanwhile, for convex lens, the nature of the image is determined by the position of the object. So when you place the object, the tab means the image that will be formed. And convex lenses generally will give you real images, except in one case. Why generally concave mirrors will give you real images, except in one case. You see, they have these uh, similarities. For lenses, I explained that the Object distance is negative. Look at it. When it comes to sign convection, if this is a mirror or a lens, the object is usually placed this way towards the left. That is where you place the object. You don't place objects towards the right. And according to sign convection, any distance towards the left is taken as negative. So, object distance are always negative for concave lenses and convex lenses. Why for mirrors, the same goes. The objects are usually towards the left of these mirrors. So, object distance is usually taken as negative, whether it is concave or convex or mirrors. Now, look at this. There are two types of images. This is basically revision class. They will deal with questions. They will look at similarities and differences between the human eyes and the uh, camera 
they will look at certain facts about the human eyes. We are going to solve a lot of questions to answer some of your confusion. Just look at this. If this is image distance, sorry, object distance, image can either be formed here or here. Image that is formed towards the left or before the lens or before the mirror, they are referred to as virtual image. Virtual image. They are not on the screen. So for virtual images, the image distance is b is equals negative. Now the images that are formed towards the right of the lens here are referred to as real images. Real images. And for real images, image distance b is taken as positive. So object distance is always taken as negative. Why image distance can either be positive or can either be negative. For converse lens, the focal length is always taken as positive because most times the image form is real, so the length is towards this side. While for concave lens, the focal length is taken as negative. And this also portrays the area where I said that Converse lenses behave as concave mirrors. For concave mirror, the focal length is generally taken as positive. While for converse mirror, it is taken as negative. Ladies and gentlemen, I trust this is making sense to you. Now, mirror formulas. Uh, I introduced mirror formulas in other mirrors. And I think in episode number 66, I solved a question using the lens formula. For mirrors, when it comes to plane mirrors, plane mirrors do not have focal point. So if I say find the focal length of a plane mirror, it is zero. You don't calculate focal length for plane mirror. Why for concave or convex mirrors, yes, you can have focal length. On the other hand, for lenses, there is always focal point. If our lenses have two focal points. That's where you see where I say image is kept between F1 and 2 F1. They have two focal points. These are very interesting comparisons and very interesting facts about mirrors and lenses. How about the formula? The mirror formula is 1 over F is equals 1 over V plus 1 over U. F is focal length V is image distance and U is object distance. You can as well use this formula to solve for lenses. It's acceptable. But this brings a certain type of confusion. Especially in most cases where you see that for lenses, when a virtual image is produced or when the image is upright, you see that image distance is negative and you see that object distance is negative for an upright image in a converse lens so at such you may have miss uh problems or um challenges or confusion using this formula so when it comes to lens henceforth we shall be using this lens formula one over f to be equals one over b minus 1 over u v comes first then u later then the sign is negative for lenses and the sign is positive for mirrors it will make a lot of sense as we start solving now look at this interesting fact about human eyes if you look at an object with your eyes you most likely will feel that the object is erect or the object is standing upright. But this is not true. When the light falls on the retina, the image that is produced is not upright, it is inverted. So the image in the eye is inverted. But how do you now see upright images given that images that are formed 
in the eye or in the retina are inverted and upside down. This is as a result of the functioning of the brain. It is brain that interprets and repositions the object in your eye. But originally, if something is like this, your eye sees it like this. Light from external sources. Light external sources from external sources. How do they enter the eye? They enter the eyes through the pupil. When they enter this eye through these pupils, the image is then formed in the retina. So retina is the part of the eye where the image is formed. So what type of image? Inverted upside down image. How does the image get to the brain? Knowing that it enters from the pupil, then forms on the retina. This image in the retina, it passes or it moves or it travels as electrical signals. Signals through the optic nerves. Optic nerves. Where it gets to the brain, which interprets it as an upright 3D image. It is important to know that the eye lens is convex, the cornea is convex, and the eye retina has a somehow concave uh, structure. The eye behaves similar to your camera, but there are also differences. This will take us to what we call similarities and differences between the eyes and the camera. What are the similarities between them and what are the differences between them? Ladies and gentlemen, let us look at the similarities and differences, dichotomy, discrepancy between the human eye and the camera. The human eye and the camera. Let's begin with the similarities. One of the similarities between the human eye and the camera is that they both have light sensitive screen. For the eye, the light sensitive screen is referred to as retina. And retina functions similar to film in a camera. They both form inverted images, which means camera can form upside down image while the eye forms an upside down image. So they both can make, make use of converse lenses. The amount of light can be adjusted in both the eye and the camera. When the light is too bright, you wake up, you go outside, you see, or from a dark place to a very bright place, you see your eye trying to adjust, to accommodate. So for the eyes, that is done via the iris. For the camera, it is diaphragm. Now, both have light-proof interiors. Both of these, they have light-proof interiors, both the eyes and the camera. Both, they have light openings, the part that opens to light. For the eye, it is pupil. For the camera, it is aperture. It is what opens to light. Once it opens very wide, more light can enter. If it doesn't open very wide, lesser light will enter. So aperture is a very important factor you look at when buying a camera or a phone. Then, they both have image detectors. The camera has image detector. The eyes have image detector. For the eye, it is retina. The image is formed on the retina. For the camera, it is film. F-I-L-M. Now, let's look at the differences between the eye and camera. The first is that the distance between the lens and the retina is fixed in the human eye. Meanwhile, for cameras, it is adjustable. You can adjust the distance between the lens and the the eye is a biological organ, biological, a living organ, but cameras are non-living things, they are mere mechanical devices. So that is like one of the biggest differences. One is living, is biological, while the other is mechanical. 
Then the lens of the eye has a variable focal length. Variable focal length. Meanwhile, that of camera, the focal length is fixed. The eye exhibits persistent and binocular visions, while the camera does not. The eye sees a 3D image, but the camera only sees a two-dimensional image. The eyes can see as wide as 180 degrees, but the camera is basically around 60 degrees. And these are the things we should know when it comes to similarities and differences between the human eyes and the camera. Like I told you earlier, uh, this class will feature questions on that basically lenses, optics, and general revision. So let's begin with these questions from the Flash Learners Jam application. Then we go to the specially selected questions, calculations. These are the parts I want to train you so that when you see calculation questions, you are not scared. You boldly face physics calculations. Yes, very, very important. So let's see. The first question here is, is which part of the camera functions like the retina of the eye? For the eye, what does the retina do? Image is formed in the retina. So which part of the eye or retina is equivalent to what in camera? Look at here. They both have image detectors. For the eye, retina. For the camera, film. So film is correct. Retina and film, they have similar function aperture is light opening you see for some phones they will tell you they have variable aperture which means you can adjust to allow more light or lesser light depending on the environment so we have this question says the following are parts of the eyes one the retina two the pupil and three the iris the correct equivalent in the camera in the same order are we already know that for retina it is equivalent to film so that makes option b and c out of it right meaning we are looking at option a and d so poopy where is poopy poopy is equivalent to aperture in camera they are light opening so poopy is aperture so which basically makes option A out of it and option D is the correct option because the iris and the diaphragm, they both have similar question, uh, function as you can see here, iris and diaphragm. So if you follow this series, there is no question you will not be able to solve. I'm teaching you jump standard, above jump standard and thinking. So I don't think there's any class you will follow, there will be so details that will pay the price and go the extra mile. I do a lot of research, soft thinking before I come to record videos. And if you see that, the spacing between this episode and the previous one is very wide, right? Because I have to take time to think of, okay, since this is the last episode of optics and lens, so what is missing? What did I do wrong? What should I do? I have to look at all the videos on that lens, all the videos on that mirrors to see, okay, what is missing? What is missing? And you see that in the introduction of this class, I measured a lot of things to clarify. And I able to do this formula. And I said we are going to answer a lot of questions just to make sure that you are good. And one of the reasons people say that they study and forget is not that they have problems. No. We have different types of persons. We have the ones that they understand very fast and they forget very fast. For those type of persons, what they need is constant practice. If you watch this video once, you will forget after a while. So keep watching. Watch like five, six, seven, eight times. By the time you watch so many times, you get used to it. For example, if I say A for apple, B for ball, your mind goes to C. If I say John 3.16, for God so don't the word, for those that are, are Christians, you know that that verse is very popular. You've learned it over and over again. Papa is a kind of fool. So, or some songs, music comes, you play the music, play, 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 before you know, you master the lyrics unknowingly. So practice is what makes somebody perfect. So the fact that you forget doesn't mean, no, 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 it's your priority. 
you study today, you, you understand, you start doing other things, and you are not going back to that topic, you definitely forget. We have the ones that they understand slowly, but they retain for a very long time. For those ones, they need to study, ask questions, understand, then they know. So we have different type of persons. We are all different. So nobody is better than the other. Some are good at this. Some can sit down to study. Some they can easily understand, but they are re re uh, restless. They cannot even sit down to study for long. So irrespective of your personality, you are good. You don't have any problem. Just know yourself. In philosophy and logic, a philosopher Socrates says, "Man, know yourself. Man, know thyself. You know yourself more than others. So don't compare yourself with anybody. The parts of the human eye that does similar work as the diaphragm of a camera lens is iris. So these are basic questions. In comparing the camera and the human eye, the film of the camera functions as the retina." In the microscope, the eyepiece lens mainly acts as a magnifier. That is what the eyepiece lens of a microscope does. It magnifies small objects to make them very, very big. And that is basically the function of microscope. Some objects you can see with your eye or that are very tiny. You, you look at the lens, it magnifies them and makes them very, very big and bogus. An astronomical telescope is said to be in a normal adjustment when image is at infinity. So when image is formed as infinity, like the final image, when it is at infinity, we say that, okay, this astronomical telescope is under normal adjustment. And the operation of an optic fiber, a fiber is based on the principle of refraction of light. That is the principle the optic fiber functions as. Now, if you are looking at all these things I'm saying, or all these questions that I am answering, and you feel like, ah, where is he getting this answer from? Check the last episode. I explained everything about optics. Even these eyes and lens, in fact, everything that I've done so far in this episode, there are things I've done before. So, if you still feel, ah, I didn't know this one though, go back and watch as many times as possible. This video and some of you running up and down to get books, to get hand out, to attend lecture. I don't have issues with that. But one thing I'm sure of is if you get the Flash Denance app, you can chat me up on WhatsApp now. I'll put you through. Just reach out to me. Even without getting the app, we can be friends. I can motivate you or you ask questions. Right? Now, if you follow to get the app and you follow the videos, and there is no way possible for you to score below 250, it's not possible. So, other resources and those things. We are just busy for nothing, joining 205 groups, WhatsApp group, getting distracted. It will make you to fail. You don't need all those things. Or some of you, former scholar, you go to uh, online, bring questions, post in the group to intimidate other person. They will see you as scholar, scholar, scholar. So those ones that are faithfully studying the past exam, then you, you fail. They will say, ah, now you know book past, why I can't fail? They will know that you know really no book. You are just trying to do eye service. You are not taking time to develop yourself. You are taking time to drop questions, join. Oh. Okay, now let's see this question. It says, this is a calculation question. An observer with normal eyes views an object with a magnifying glass of focal length 5 cm. The angular magnification is dash. Magnification is equals question. Angular magnification. The least distance of distinct vision D is equal to 25. I explained all this in the previous episode. So, what is the angular magnification? Ladies and gentlemen, the formula for angular magnification is very simple. It is simply M is equal to 1 plus D over F, where D is the least distance of the Less distance of distinct vision, why um, f is the focal length. So, once again, the least distance of distinct vision is the closest an object can be close to the eye for the eye to form a sharp image of that object, for the image to still be clear. When you go below that, the eye cannot form a sharp or a distinct image of that object. So, this is very simple. Food is ready. If I am correct, 
we have 1 plus 25 over f is 5 over 5. That is it. This should give you 6. And one thing you should not miss is don't feel I know it all. There are times I stop or I say some things, or maybe I forget some things, I make mistakes. If you call me to it, why not? Well, there are times I solve questions, then at the end of the answer, maybe I give the wrong answer, I don't answer it. So don't feel, and it is nothing, we are all learning. So, so long you understand the procedure, you can even solve and get a more accurate answer than mine. So that is basically how things work, okay? So now, let's proceed. A slide of width, 2.5 cm. When you hear width or height, it's basically talking about the height, right? Or, okay, let's say width. Let's do it that way. Positioned 5 cm from the length of a projector. The object distance is 5 cm. If the width of the image is 100 cm, so the image width is 100 cm. And the force given is therefore the object width. So object width is 2.5 cm. So find the distance from the lens to the screen of the projector. So that will give you the image distance. We don't have that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have image width and object width. Or you can say image distance and object distance. So this basically is magnification. Magnification is image distance, sorry, image distance over object distance or image height over object height. So image height over object height. And that is 100 divided by 2.5. 2.5, you move this decimal point only once to get to the end. So that is 10. So 2.5 is the same thing as 25 divided by 10. So this is 100 divided by 25 over 10. This is the same thing as 100. When you turn this division to multiplication, the other part will invert. So times 10 over 25 instead of times, instead of divided by 25 over 10. So that will basically give you 1000 divided by 25. That should give you 40 centimeters. No, 40. Magnification has no unit because it is ratio of the same unit. Now that magnification is 40, M is equals 40. And magnification is also equals image distance over object distance. So image distance will therefore be magnification times object distance. And that will give you 40 times. 5 5 times 4 5 10 15 20 that's 200 zero, zero. so 200 cm is the image distance and that is the correct option the objective and the eyepiece focal length are short yes the objective and the eyepiece focal length are short in compound microscope at what angle are the two mirrors in the kaleidoscope inclined to produce multiple images. Kaleidoscope is a toy which uses the principle of inclined mirrors to produce multiple images. So we fix the two mirrors at 60 degrees for this guy to produce multiple images. On that mirror, I explain the number of images formed. All these are already treated. Let's see what happens here. An object is placed in front of a converging lens. Converging lens is also referred to as convex lens. An object in front of a converging lens. Converging lens is convex lens. Now, what do we know for convex lens? For convex lens, we know that focal length is positive, and we know that the object distance is negative. If the image formed is real image distance will be positive if the image is virtual image distance is negative so let's continue so focal length is 20 centimeter 
The image is virtual and has a magnification of two. So image is virtual, okay? And magnification m is equals two. Okay. What is the distance of the object from the lens? Object distance is what we are looking for. U is equals question. Let me be building up the formula bank. Magnification is positive for virtual images. For all virtual images, magnification is positive. Why for real images, magnification is negative? I think this is something not far-fetched. For virtual images, right, the object distance is negative and the image distance is negative. So magnification is equals minus negative over minus negative. That is plus. For real images, object distance is negative, image distance is positive. So that is plus divided by minus and becomes minus. So these are very, very easy things to understand. So this is 20 and this is 2. We are looking for the object distance. Let's employ the length formula. 1 over f is equal to 1 over v minus 1 over u to give us 1 over 20 is equal to 1 over v. Okay. N is equals V over U. 2 is equals V over U. So V is therefore 2U. Substituting that into this V, we have 1 over 2U minus 1 over U. 1 over 20 is equals LCM of 2U and U is 2U. So 2u divided by 2u is 1. 2u divided by u is u is 2. 2u divided by u is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. So minus 2. This gives us 1 over 20 is equals minus 1 over 2u. Cross multiplying, 2u is equals minus 20. And u will give you minus 10. So, minus 10 is the correct option. Now, if you look at the options, there is no negative. What does this mean? It simply means that the negative is not really a real value. The negative, the negative is to show you the distance of the object. Object distance is definitely negative. So, the negative shows that the object distance is negative. Then the 10 shows the distance. The negative shows you where the object is. So object is towards the left and it is 10. If they had put positive and negative options, obviously we are going with the negative one. So that is it for this. The diagram above shows a prism arrangement in a periscope. Take note of that. Cylindrical lens is used for the correction of which of these defects. It is used to correct astigmatism. Myopia is short-sightedness. It is corrected using concave lens. Hypermetropia is long-sightedness. It is corrected using converse lens. While presbyopia is also referred to as loss of accommodation of the eye. So this one is corrected using bifocal lens. And astigmatism is corrected using a cylindrical lens. Take note of all these concepts. Now look at this question. Very interesting. If the linear magnification of the objective and eyepiece are the objective focal length is so okay, not focal length. Object magnification of the objective lens is four. Magnification of the eyepiece lens is seven, respectively. Calculate the angular magnification of the microscope. Angular magnification of the microscope, given the objective 
magnification and the eyepiece magnification is not something you worry about at all it's not something you look for formulas at all just multiply the eyepiece and objective me times mo to have 7 times 4 7 times 4 is 28 so that is just it multiply the eyepiece and the objective you are going to get angular magnification of the microscope simple as a b c d e f g g h now look at the next question here says a convex lens of power five dopsters when it comes to convex lens or when you hear convex lens certain things come to your mind that the focal length is positive the image distance is negative and when a convex lens forms a virtual image or a red image for convex lens virtual images are erased or when you say when you hear upright or erased it means they are virtual images so for virtual images magnification is positive image distance is negative you see now that we have everything we need to solve so anytime you hear convex lens you already know that focal length is positive object distance is negative those two are sure now when you now hear that the convex lens forms an array because it's supposed to form an re and inverted image when the image becomes erased then it is not a re image it is virtual image so for virtual image magnification is positive because both object distance and image distance are negative they cancel out so the power of this lens is five daptas power is equals 5d and i told you that power is one over focal length power is inversely proportional to focal length but in meters which means focal length is equals one over power but any answer you get is in meters not in centimeter you must have to convert so what am i trying to say power is 5d so focal length is 1 over 5 but this answer is in meters that is 0 0.2 meters focal length we generally solve in centimeter so anytime you get focal length from power of length you must change it to centimeter how do you do that by multiplying by 100 so this will give you 0 0.2 meter times 100 is equals 20 centimeter so the focal length we are making use of is 20 centimeter so magnification is positive so m is equals 3 we are looking for the object distance and the image distance magnification is equals image distance over object distance and it is positive so 3 is equals v over u v therefore becomes 3u when you cross multiply so we have u to be u v to be 3u applying the lens formula 1 over f is equals 1 over instead of v is 3u minus 1 over u take note we've agreed to be using to use this formula for lens minus instead of plus we're using for mirrors and i told you why so 1 over f f is 20 1 over 20 is equals the lcm of 3u and u is 3u 3u divided by 3u that is 1 1 times 1 is 1 minus 3u divided by u that is 3 3 times 1 is 3 this gives you 3u is equals minus 2 times 20 so 3u is equals minus 20 to get u minus 40 rather to get u we said that u is minus 40 divided by 3 that should give you 13.3333 or something like that and it is negative so that is your answer u 13.333 minus so v is equals 
3u and this is equal to 3 times u which is minus 13.33 so that will give you the answer the next question says a diverging lens a diverging lens is a concave lens or you can call it negative lens a diverging lens is also called negative lens why because it has a negative focal length now if the diverging lens has a focal length 10 cm because it is a diverging lens and because it is a negative lens focal length will be minus 10 cm calculate its power p is equal to question power is equals 1 over focal length but remember for this to be true or for power focal length has to be in meters for focal length to power it has to be in centimeter look at what i mean focal length is one over power right so when if you are doing this way any answer that you get convert it to centimeter multiplied by 100 if you are doing it this way you must first convert the focal length back to meters how do you do that by dividing by 100 so minus 10 cm equals minus 0 0.1 meters so you come here and say 1 over minus 0 0.1 meters that is it you solve and you get your power 1 over 0 0.1 is the same thing as 1 divided by minus 0 0.1 this is the same thing as 1 divided by 1 over 10 this is the same thing as 1 times 10 over 1 this is the same thing as 10 so the power is should be around 10 deltas minus 10 deltas for myopia or short-sighted person the far point is the image distance while the near point is the object distance for hypermetropia or a long-sighted person the near point is the image distance and the far point is the object distance they are inverse you see that in future questions but look at this a far-sighted person cannot see objects that are lesser than 10 centimeter away look at this if this is okay 100 centimeter away if this is more than 15 centimeter and this is the eye this person will not see the object right for the person to see the object it must be closer it must come around 100 centimeter which means this person is far-sighted long-sighted person and this is the closest the person can see which means this is the near point of the person so for a far-sighted person near point is the image distance so the image distance is 100 centimeter now at least distance of distant vision at the least distance of distant vision or close to the eye the image distance is negative so when you hear most of these type of questions far-sighted basically the image distance is negative at least distance of distant vision so this is negative if this person wants to read a book at 25 centimeter so object distance is 25 centimeter it is also always negative what type of lens and focal length does he need ladies and gentlemen 1 over f is equals 1 over v minus 1 over u 1 over f is equals 1 over minus 100 minus 1 over minus 25 1 over f is equals 100 at the lcm 100 divided by 100 is 100 divided by minus 100 okay let's use negative set minus 100 divided by minus 100 is 1 1 times 1 is 1 minus minus 100 divided by minus 25 that is 4 4 times minus 1 that is minus 4 this gives us 1 over f is equals 1 minus 4 that should give us um, minus 3 
u va menos un re. So, menos 3f is equals menos 100. f is equals menos 100 over menos 3. So, this, that is the focal length of the person. Focal length is positive. Now, what type of lens do we need? Or what type of lens is focal length positive? That is basically a converse lens. So, the person will need a converse lens with a focal length of 33.33 centimeters. That is the answer to this question. A myopic man has a far point of 2 meter. What will be the prescription for the eyeglasses he will use? What will be the prescription for the eyeglasses he will use? And look at the options. Option A, minus 1.0 D. Option B, minus 0 0.5 D. Option C, 0 0.5 D. And option E, 1.0 D. Each of these D stands for doubters. It means they are saying that which of these glasses will a myopic person use in terms of the power of the lens? And a myopic person is a short-sighted person. And the far point is 2 meters. And I said that for a myopic person, far point is the image distance. So V is equals 2 meters minus 2 meters. Ladies and gentlemen, all this I, far point, near point, least distance of distinct vision, all these basically, from what I've seen in most of the questions, the image distances are usually uh, negative. Now, what will be the prescription for the eye glasses? A myopic person with a far point of 2 meters. We know that power is equals 1 over focal length. We have the image distance only that is what is given. Why about the object distance? Now for a myopic person, the far point is the image distance, the near point is the image distance. And this is a human being. So for a myopic human being or for a human being with short-sightedness, the far point is infinity. So the object distance will take it to be as infinity. From here, food is ready. 1 over focal length is equals 1 over minus 2, which is 1 over uh, V minus 1 over infinity or minus infinity. So 1 divided by infinity will definitely get us it will go. 1 divided by infinity will give you around 0. So this will go to give you 1 over f is equals 1 over minus 2. So minus 2 is equals f. The focal length is minus 2. And ladies and gentlemen, since the image distance is in meters, it means that this far point is in meters. So it is equals minus 2 meters. Since the focal length is in meters, this is in meters, we don't need to convert to meters again to get the power of the length. We can simply say that P is equals 1 over minus 2. And that is your answer. A nearsighted student, which is also a myopic student, has a near point of 0 0.5 uh, 1 meters. So I told you that for a nearsighted person or a myopic person, Near point is the object distance, and that is 0 0.1 meters. So, object distance is always negative, and the focal length is f is equals 5.0 centimeter. What is the student's far point? Far point is the image distance for a myopic or a near sighted person. Looking at all these. The object distance is in meters, the focal length is in centimeter. We must solve in the same unit. So we say u is equals minus 10 centimeter. Converting from meters to centimeter. Basically, we are looking for the image distance because that is the far point of a myopic person.
Meanwhile, for a hypermetropia, for a long-sighted person, far point is the object distance and near point is the image distance. So they are vice versa. So one over focal length phi is equals uh one over v minus one over u. So this is minus ten. One over five is equals one over v minus one over minus ten. One over five is equals LCM of minus ten and v is let's say ten v. Ten v divided by v is ten. Ten times one is ten minus ten v divided by minus ten. That will give you minus v. Minus v times one will give you minus v. So you see that we are having minus 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 times minus will give you plus. So where does this get get us? When we cross multiply, we have something like ten v is equals fifty plus five v. Collecting like terms, ten v minus five v that should be five v is equals fifty. So v will give you ten. So this is a positive ten. Does it mean that the image is a real image? Yeah. So image distance is ten. That is the answer we are getting. Or the far point of the person is ten. A hand lens has a focal length of five centimeter. How far should the lens be from an object to obtain a magnification of ten? Hand lens is simply a convex lens with virtual or you say with a red image that is hard lens for you so for a convex lens with a red image focal length is positive magnification for virtual images positive object distance is uh, negative a red image is usually virtual so image distance is negative so these are the properties of this uh, lens now, a head length of focal length 5 cm, f is equals 5 cm. How far should the lens be from an object to produce a magnification of 10 cm? So, object distance is question, magnification is 10, which is positive. And magnification is object distance, image distance over object distance. So, image distance will therefore give you 10 times object distance. Applying the mirror formula, 1 over 5 is equals, applying the lens formula is equals 1 over 10 u minus 1 over u. 1 over 5 is equals 10 u over 1 minus 10. 1 over 5 is equals minus 9 over 10. 10 u. u is therefore minus 9 times 5 all over 10. This is therefore equals minus 9 over 2. And minus 9 over 2 should give you 4.5 minus 4.5. So the object distance is minus 4.5 centimeter. So that is basically it. Minus shows that the object distance is negative as well. An observer with a normal eyes, or <laughs> an observer with normal eyes, view an object with a magnifying glass of focal length five centimeter. The angular magnification is. This is a very simple and takeaway question. Angular magnification in this case is one plus b over f, and or 1 plus d with a magnifying glass of focal length the angular magnification is dash in this type of question they will tell you that the distance of distinct vision is 25 centimeter or anything that they give you as such magnification will be 1 plus 25 over 5 so this is basically 1 plus 5 and this is 6. So the magnification is 6. 
1 plus d over f. So for every question, they will give you d, the distance of distant division. So when you use that formula, you arrive at your answer. An astronomical telescope has an eyepiece of focal length. So focal length of the eyepiece is 5 cm. If the angular magnification in normal adjustment is 10 cm or m is equals 10 cm, what is the distance between the objective and the eyepiece? So we are looking for the distance between objective and eyepiece. The distance between objective and eyepiece is basically you add the objective and the eyepiece focal length. Now magnification is equals for astronomical telescope under normal adjustment. Magnification is objective focal length over eyepiece focal length. So therefore we have the eyepiece focal length, we have the magnification. The objective focal length is therefore equals magnification times the eyepiece focal length. And this is like 10 times 5. And that is 50 centimeter. From here, food is ready. The distance between the objective and the eyepiece is simply objective plus eyepiece. And that will give you 50 centimeter plus eyepiece 5 centimeter. That is basically 55 centimeter. These are basic questions. So there are more questions. You can look at them on the Flash Learners application. Install on your app and play stores, or you can chat me directly if you have questions regarding the app or how to activate. Or just chat if you are watching this video, chat me up for any reason at all. Just message me, it's a good one. And you see that I put a lot of effort to do all these videos. Please don't take them for granted. Do well. I wish you success in your exams and see you in the next episode where we shall introduce dispersion of light and missing of colors. That's obviously an interesting topic.